Hello and welcome back. Today we will be doing a starting steps video here for Sweden. Now we're currently on patch 1.4. The patch 1.5 open beta is out. We are going to be on patch 1.4 though for this, but we're going to talk about some 1.5 ideas um, quite a bit uh, throughout. Now there's a few things that are really unique about Sweden. Uh, first of all, it's going to be kind of one of the main features of the early portion of this run or perhaps the run itself, and that's going to be forming Scandinavia. You do have a nice little formable. Um, also, you start off with a subject, and the subject is in a personal union. So if either you or the subject abandon, uh, you know, monarchism, uh, they will you will split and you will no longer have them as a subject, and you want to have them as, sub as a subject for the purposes of forming Scandinavia. So this is kind of the first uh, and major big feature. Uh, also fairly unique to them, or not unique to them, but a feature that's really important to note is they start with a, mo a moderate uh, in their uh, landowner slot, which is important. Uh, uh, we'll kind of talk about this a little bit in just a minute, uh, but what you can do is you can exile this moderate. Uh, actually, let's talk about it now. You can exile this moderate, and then he will roll a random ideology. This guy's spineless now. He doesn't believe in anything. He's just breezing the wind, but when we exile him, he'll be really sad. In order to exile him, you do have to pull him out of government, so we will do that here first, and now he'll be out of government, and so now we can exile him. Uh, once we exile him, he will uh, be spineless. Uh, notably, we start off with a general and a navy guy. If one of these guys is a landowner and they are popular, they are very likely to become the new leader of the IG uh, when we exile this guy. So what you can do here in order to try and massage your IG start is you can take a look and be like, hmm, oh, positivist, my, why not? Uh, and you can take a look for someone who is a landowner with that has an ideology you like and recruit him, especially if he is positive positive, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, a positive, uh, popularity, uh, we're not really seeing what we want, so let's just talk about this moderate business, uh, where you can exile this guy, and once you exile him, he grows a spine, and now he believes in something, now he's a traditionalist, and what you do, this can roll anything, it doesn't roll with the standard landowner rating, uh, or waiting, when you exile someone who is a moderate, they can just roll anything, so you can roll, you know, a Republican who will want you to get you on to count, or not council republic, but you can roll a Republican who's anti monarchical uh, you can roll notably also a market liberal, and so, uh, one of the starting things for this run, if you want it to be as explosive as possible, is continuing to re-roll this until you get a market liberal, and then let's pretend this guy's a market liberal, so we'll talk about exactly how you do, uh, and then we reform the government, we put this guy back in, then the guy who we exiled, who was formerly a moderate, we will be able to invite him back. Uh, we see that he is a traditionalist, and let's invite him back, and now that he is invited back, we can take this character interaction with him, if you have the Voice of the People DLC, uh, and we can grant him leadership, and now he will be in charge of the IG again, which he was before we did anything, but now instead of being a moderate, now he's a traditionalist. And so uh, what we're probably going to be doing is we're going to be keeping on doing this until we get someone who is a market liberal, uh, which will be quite nice because our industrialist is a market liberal, Liberal, and this will make it really easy to pass uh, free trade and mercantilism. So this is uh, an important and very nice feature uh, you have kind of at the very start of the game with Sweden or any other country where you start with a landowner moderate. Okay, so we have re-rolled and now we have our market liberal here. Uh, we also got the best of both worlds because before we got the market liberal, we did recruit up a popular jingoist and there he is. And so we will be able to reform government. We will be able to put this these guys in right here and we're not going to put our market liberal in yet instead what we are going to do is we are going to use the jingoist uh, in order to pass colonial exploitation way faster however we do want to lock in our market liberal guy whom we have recruited and so we will invite him and he will want to start a movement for free trade or laissez-faire and we're more than happy to go along with that and we will eventually give him ig leadership and so this is the ideal scenario where uh the guy who you exiled for uh, is a jingoist you get to pass colonial exploitation real quick first and then you go after you know both free trade and interventionalism with the aid of your market liberal because taking a look um, and I think this is very important to note uh, these guys landowners regular uh, are going to be interested in uh, let's see paternalistic probably not it's probably patriarchal 
No, paternalistic, all right. Uh, they are going to be interested in uh, notably kinds of economic systems, like we see down here, like isolationism and mercantilism, economic system, they don't like laissez-faire, and uh, this sort of thing. However, when an IG leader uh, is of uh, a certain ideology, the ideology overwrites the preferences of the interest group itself. And so when the, uh, when the market liberal is in charge instead of the jingoist, uh, this will say market liberal, and it will override it. And so this is uh, an important kind of thing. And this is the fundamentally uh, the strongest way you could start because it's going to make your law passes a little easier, at least initially. But it's overall not that important because, you know, Sweden does start off with pretty good laws. Interventionism is pretty good. Oligarchy is decent. We're probably going to stick on it for a little bit, especially because we want to stay mononarchical. Uh, you know, we do start off with schools. Religious schools are probably better than no schools. We have freedom of conscience, so we can set our PMs to uh, kind of go after the clout of, uh, you know, the the in, uh, the intellectual interest group, or sorry, or after the devout. And, you know, we have rights of assembly for a start, which is really nice, because that means we're going to be able to go guaranteed libs a lot easier. So we do start off with a really good situation in regards to our laws. But starting in this way, uh, you know, to try and get the perfect IG leader is going to make the run a little bit easier. And it's very important to note, you can do this with anyone who starts out with a moderate um, leader, unless they are isolation, or sorry, unless they have closed borders. If you have closed borders specifically, you will not be able to re-invite uh, the interest group leader whom you exiled, unfortunately. What's also fairly unique about, uh, you know, Sweden and all of kind of where Scandinavia is, is for 1.4, this land is absolutely insane very 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 strong it's significantly less valuable in 1.5 and unpacking that is uh having to do with state bonuses so right now in 1.4 they're very strong because of state bonuses because logging industry throughput of which you know we see it some in finland we see some in sweden is extraordinarily strong and iron mine building throughput is also extraordinarily strong however coming into patch 1.5 you will want to build local economies so you'll want to build everything in one place and uh, Sweden and all of, you know, kind of Scandinavia suffers from really not having a lot of coal and also not having a lot of coal in areas where they have their iron mines, specifically iron mines with really good bonuses. Like I think Denmark doesn't even have that much coal uh, or any coal. It's just this one state which has a level eight coal mine and you really want to have coal and iron together so that you can build local economies. Like so, for example, Wallonia is a very strong state because they have all of this uh, together, although I think it has sulfur in one point five as well so i think it's even better in 1.5 this is an example of having every mining here in silesia and so um, right now in 1.4 it's really really good because the two most important industries early on are going to be iron and wood but it's going to be significantly worse in 1.5 where you want to have local economies and you really want to have you know that coal uh together with your wood and iron okay for our starting resources diplomacy we actually have a really nice situation where we can have you know uh, a bunch of rivalries all in in kind of these middle German states if we come in diplomatic actions and we see we have assigned a rivalry to a bunch of these guys which gives us an absolute ton of influence and then we're turning around and using that influence uh, in order to improve relations with kind of all the major powers that might uh, you know meddle with us and we will also be having on top of that uh, the plus 25 percent infamy decay so that's pretty nice for that for our authority we have of course done the authority trick which allows us to assign a little bit more uh, by increasing government wages and we have assigned down these consumption taxes which are generating us the most money which is liquor services uh luxury furniture and uh wine we would if these didn't generate the most money uh and we still could do fish which still generates a lot of money fish actually generates more money but we're not going to do fish because we want to tax the upper rung pops it's not absolutely essential that we extract as much from possible uh but you know fish is actually extraordinarily attractive for us specifically so maybe you could go fish uh i mean Actually, fish just looks absolutely insane. Uh, does it look... No. Do we... But we have to get rid of services to tax fish. So I don't like it. So we'll just keep in on the services. All the other things equal. You do want to tax upper rung pops as much as possible. Uh, but taxing uh, fish here will give you a little bit more money. At least at the start of the game here for us. Um, but we have put this in. And we are also using four edicts currently. And those edicts are... We are... Uh, 
encouraging road maintenance in both Norland and Svealand. And then in Svealand, we are going to build uh, all of our manufacturing up here. And in Norland, we are going to build the resource industries here with the iron mines and the logging camps. And so by putting down the edict for, uh, you know, uh, encouraging manufacturing, or sorry, for road maintenance, we get a little bit of infrastructure, but we're mainly concerned with the state construction efficiency for now. Um, this is going to fall off relatively quickly. And then for this, we do want the manufacturing industry throughput. For technology, we are kind of making a rush for railways because we do have kind of all the good society tech we need. And so this is going to be kind of what's most effective. I suppose you could go for water to boiler as a little bit of a deviation, but we don't have, you know, the most infrastructure available. Even with our edicts down and construction sectors, which we haven't even put in yet, we'll take some of this as well. So speaking of, we are going to add some construction sectors as well. Uh, we are going to add two in Norland here and another one in Svealand. They will be evenly mixed now. They will take some infrastructure. And after this, we are going to want to start cranking, um, you know, all of uh, the resource industries up quite a little bit here uh, in order to start kind of coming into things. And so we'll probably do two logging camps uh, and then we'll take a look at PMs here. So anytime you're starting a new game, it is important to check your PMs because generally you're not using the most efficient PMs. For example, we see we're not on craftsman sewing and we would really want to be on craftsman sewing. This just involves us actively trading for silk. Uh, but we also see we're not even on dye workshops. And this is a very critical one because we want our ownership to all switch from merchant guilds to privately owned. Uh, and by switching to dye workshops, it does switch to privately owned. So we're gonna need to import both silk and dyes and we will do that before we unpause. Uh, it is also important, you know, anytime, you know, you see uh, that you are on, you know, state-run churches. If you want the devout to be powerful, you stick on this one. If you want the intelligentsia to be powerful, which is what we want, you swap over. We will need to build another university. Philosophy departments also swap to the wrong direction a lot of times. Uh, I believe our capital is, is in Svealand here, uh, and so we will probably be looking to add another university here uh, in order to try and trigger the event, although the event might be already triggered for us because I think we are on the next tech. I think we already have empiricism, uh, but we do want to be on cargo port we see that the other ones are looking pretty good and fish notably is almost always on uh you know being uh I think for everyone it starts merchant guild owned when you can choose to have it be privately owned so you will want to do this uh, we do see that our logging camps are big nice already on sawmills so this is going to be tremendous and we're going to double check butchering tools are going to be needed for the livestock and that's kind of everything you know that might be a little bit amiss uh from start so we're about ready to unpause here okay so the last thing we need to think about is where we want our strategic interest as far as expansion goes i'm thinking we actually want to dominion uh both denmark and lubeck here in order to get the absolute max uh for the uh scandinavian formation of course we do need to transfer finland as well at some point uh and so this is going to require a couple things first of all we have to be strong enough uh to fight prussia uh, in order to go after lubeck uh, because <laughs> Prussia is very likely to defend them, and so we either have to do that or wait for Prussia to be occupied. But we will damage relations with them to start, uh, and we will rival... Actually, let's just rival them instead. Uh, although, I guess we don't want them joining a bunch of plays against us because we're rivaling them, so maybe we don't want to. The second thing of note is uh, Denmark, who we can either rival and make sure we dominion them, but we can't do it immediately uh, because they are a minor power, we are a minor power, we have to be one power rank above them, and so where we'll probably turn for our first expansion is going to be here for Zulu or Gaza, looking to get into, um, you know, starting to get into Transvaal and Orania, or we could go after, you know, Brunei, something like this. Uh, but the point is, is we want to make a meaningful expansion spot, and if we are going to dominion anyone, since we are a minor power, uh, they cannot be, you know, relatively large. So, for example, Bol Bolivia, one of the best places to go for earlier, we're not going to be able to do it because we're a minor power, and they're a minor power, we have to be at least a major power. But we have declared an interest in South Africa, so we will take an unpause and be on our way here. So it looks like our ruler just died. I don't know if this is uh, something that's destined to happen at the very beginning of the game. Uh, if it's not, now we have an intelligentsia guy in charge. So this is just going to kind of shift things around a little bit in terms of who we can put in power. Uh, but it's already looking like maybe the market liberal is not going to be all that useful. We could reform this here. Uh, but I don't think we're going to want to do that just yet. I think we're going to want to get colonial exploitation finished. And then maybe use the market liberal landowner just for the purpose of uh, doing movements because we are 
are more legitimate without him than with him. But maybe we can cook something up uh, in terms of a reformed government that looks something a little bit like... Uh, so we need the intelligentsia in, likely, because we're monarchy. But if we could do something like this and be relatively legitimate, which we, I guess we kind of are, once we put the market liberal in charge here, we will have 40-ish 40, 40 percent pass rate, uh, you know, in order to get in free trade and this type of thing. Uh, we are going after uh, Transvaal here. Uh, I guess we're going to put in some war reparations and ban slavery as well. Uh, which makes them, or sorry, we're going after Zulu, but this is going to make it likely that they back down here. And so, uh, which is generally preferable, and if not, we'll just be landing them, and uh, most notably, we're puppeting them instead of dominioning them, so we can go directly for Transvaal and Aranya instead of needing to annex them first. So we managed to jump up to being a major power, so now we can go after several other people. The Peru-Bolivia uh, dominioning is timely before they unite, in which case it will cost like twice the infamy, uh, so we're gonna go for them first. We might be, this might be just about the very smallest you can be and go for Peru Bolivia. Also, in regards to the construction queue, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be, you know, constructing everything that is in the kind of the construction sector chain. Uh, so we are going to be building a ton of tools. We're going to be importing the fabric and we're going to be building wood and iron. Um, it's possible that in 1.5 you actually want to build local fabric, but I haven't really uh, explored this idea too much. But for now, we're going to stick to uh, importing the agrarian stuff fairly aggressively. Uh, we do have, a, we'll take a closer look at imports after it uh kind of actually let's just do this now so uh for import trade routes actually we want to come in here we want to find it and we want to make sure we're prioritizing imports at least at this very moment and we'll see who we can import from and bada boom we can import from a few people so we're going to come and send in uh from a few people and so that will help decrease our construction costs and also discourage the production of fabric in our area and then also after this we're going to be taking a look at going after peru bolivia now i do think this is a little bit of a hard war uh especially landing on them can be quite difficult uh because they don't have a lot of infrastructure and infrastructure is what determines the combat width so we're probably going to look around we're going to see that hey uh this place has 22 for infrastructure so lima we could land we have to get to la paz because that's the capital state of bolivia and so maybe we are going to land ica uh, because it has 16 infrastructure and so the combat width will be wider and we will be uh kind of abusing the multi-landing mechanic in order to get in here on them we're probably going to put in some more war goals too just to take a crack at them back and down so we have gotten in on our naval landings notably i don't think you will be able to land four in once 1.5 comes out i don't think this will work anymore where you can can land four navies all at once uh, and then the first one will catch the navy the second catches their army and the third generally gets in but this is what we're doing here we are double landing down here in Bolivia uh, hoping to be able to set uh, it as a place to designate strategic objective because since we currently don't have a front with Bolivia we can't designate La Paz we want to occupy La Paz to finish this war as quickly as possible uh, but that's how we're microing this war and so now we see this one gets in hey hey nice nice uh, we will assign one guy to each front but then now we should be able to designate the strategic objective and look to push La Paz a little bit faster so we get our enforcement off but we might have a little bit of a bug we did put in for war reps and uh, Peruvian and Bolivian war reparations and taking a look at the diplo packs which we wanted to point out because they are allowing us to construct more I don't see one for either of those nor the fact that we got uh, the same thing on Zulu so I don't know if this is bugged uh, in its current state but assuming the bug is fixed i believe it's a bug uh you know this is a uh, pretty big it should be around four five or six k uh and this goes into construction and allows us to build more uh which is kind of critical for loop now we are running out of infrastructure you see in svitlin we are going to pull back off the resource industry specifically uh because we are encouraging the resource industries here and we are out of infra uh we are at 19 out of 18 we are almost out here we will be out after we build this next construction sector so um you know it's it's definitely not nice we've also kind of not uh done the best uh on this front in terms of the law passing kind of been a little bit slow um but i think we'll expand out the coal mines because we did also get the very important uh you know atmospheric engine pump which we can't turn on just yet uh but it will be very useful for us expanding these uh next up we do have coming in it will be uh mechanical tools uh and we could look to not turn on the atmospheric engine pump just yet uh, for the purpose of trying to get railroads just a little bit faster because if you have mechanical tools already researched 
the way it will work is uh, you will get an event that allows you to get some text spread on railways. But I think we're just going to turn on the, the thing and then go get the text spread or the tech bonus to water to boiler, which I think we're going to do just after railways anyways. So as we were taking a closer look at the unification, we saw that uh, this is in fact a major unification. I was under the impression for whatever reason it was a minor unification, in which case we can do the rest of this diplomatically. We're just going to have to release Finland and we're going to have to make sure our relations with Denmark are good instead of bad. And so we are going to look to rake back or find some influence somewhere. Uh, and then we are going to look to improve relations with these guys. We don't really have to worry too much about Hanover. Netherlands might try and thumb our pie, but we'll just kind of uh, rival them as well here. I think they're probably a fine rival. Maybe someone would be a little bit not. They're pretty much a pushover. And we're going to use this in order to improve relations both with Denmark and we are going to look to improve relations with uh, Lubeck, who we have been uh, damaging relations with, uh, but we want to stop and start improving relations with them. We just need to get them into our customs union and get relations really high, and then we should be able to, you know, uh, go for unification. But we will have to do something about this Russia situation. We're going to need to find a way to get them to release the Grand Duchy of Finland, although this is also uh, coming in. This is also a personal union, so for whatever reason they get off monarchy which they don't usually early uh, they would just release them on their own so we finally managed to get colonial exploitation unfortunately we kind of low rolled uh, you know several rolls on that we've been doing it since you know the beginning with very with a pretty high percent chance we've been stuck at it for a while and all of Kenya has kind of been gotten uh, which is unfortunate we won't have that area of ingress that way so we're just going to delete our interest in Zanj actually maybe we'll go after Madagascar this run but fortunately we did go after Orania here so we will have two spots with which to start colonizing colonization speed is based on your total incorporated pops or sorry yeah your total incorporated pops which for sweden is quite quite low uh sweden does have population problems as kind of one of the main fixtures of like what's wrong um kind of with your start and so uh we don't get to colonize very fast anyways but it's not too big a deal uh and so we'll just continue on our way we did reform the government a little bit and now that we've passed this we do have a movement for enact free trade unfortunately it doesn't have much support uh so what we could do is we can probably just let's reform the government a little bit let's do this which of course is super illegitimate and now let's come back to this boyo we didn't forget about you man and we are going to grant him leadership so now he's in charge of this and so i think what we can do is we can do a relatively yeah this will be fairly legitimate and we have two market libs in and so we'll get a 40 percent kind of pass speed on free trade here so we're going to want to go free trade it's going to make everyone happy big nice and so we still are getting use out of our market liberal guy here even if it's not you know the absolute biggest use we possibly could get out of him this is the event i was talking about earlier the atmospheric engine it requires you have a certain employment level and also profitability on your uh mines after using the atmospheric engine pump technology and what we will see is it's going to give us the choice between uh throughput which is not that great and progress on a tech and we're going to choose water tube boiler however if you've already finished mechanical tools um you can get this progress on railways and so if you're trying to get railways absolutely as fast as possible what you can do is juggle and make sure that you do not pr uh, proc this event. Uh, that way you will get the progress on the railroads after you get mechanical tools. However, we're not that concerned about it. We're going to be going water tube boiler after railways anyways. I'd rather just get uh, the most efficient PMs rolling and not sweat it too, too hard. Although in a fully 100% optimized run, this might be the way to go. So we are hitting quite a bit of infrastructure pain. There is a solution to this to some extent, which is you can juggle buildings. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a motor industry in, but we're not going to let this finish. We're going to keep juggling it to the bottom of the queue once it has one week remaining. That way we don't interfere with the rest of our economy. Notably, in 1.5, a huge portion of this issue of construction sector is now costing infra, which is part of the reason we're having problems, is dealt with because uh, lighting is going to be giving uh, in the future, not yet, it is going to be giving infrastructure, and so that will be nice. We 
we are pretty close to railways we just have to wait a little while longer and so it's not overall this big a deal but it is uh you know something of a consideration we also dominion brunei uh which is going to give us uh you know a native interest in here now and so now we can declare a new interest somewhere else i do think that acquiring a lot of native interests in various areas is going to be stronger in 1.5 as a result of the reverse sway mechanic so this is something to consider if you are in 1.5 or later here playing sweden uh but we will be continuing here to try and you know diplomatically work our way into lubeck and uh you know denmark and these sorts of things we do have to keep an eye we can we might low roll like prussia interfering somewhere and maybe have to try and join uh this would be a bit unfortunate um it's perhaps the case that we want to fight prussia ourselves uh but i don't think we're gonna dow them looks like russia's getting into it a little bit with the uk classic uh but currently we'll just continue along we'll probably do the juggling trick for a little bit uh, maybe finish one or two buildings we are building of course uh this motor industries uh so that when we get the railroads we will be able to supply them with motors uh as we get going so as we finish mechanical tools here it's probably worth uh noting another thing that uh sweden suffers from is they don't start out with any uh, at the start of the game at least sulfur and so while we can get sulfur after we annex brunei here later i think we're going to take a look at a one of a better place to kind of go for it or maybe try and get it in the near future we probably don't need this zanj thing so we're going to come in here and i just want to point out that sind is a really really nice place for sulfur um i think what we're going to do now though is we're just going to import it in order to use our pms and so we're going to take a look uh we don't have any demand for it so we can't import it through the ui that way but we'll We'll turn on uh, it with the paper mills, which is going to create uh, negative buy orders, and now we can uh, import it. And we're going to import it from the British. It's not going to use our convoys, and so this will be good. We're probably going to declare war, maybe Dominion Sin, maybe go after Bahrain or Nej, these types of things, and look to get a native interest in these regions. Sin notably also gives you access to the very nice Sikh Empire, which is going to. It's going to be good for us playing, you know, uh, Sweden here at the very start of the game because they have a lot of pops and this is something we suffer from. Unfortunately, we're going to have to get under multiculturalism before we can make use of this, but this is probably going to inform our tech strategy, you know, following getting railways and water to boiler where maybe we delay mechanized workshops, um, but... In order to try and make a bit of a push for human rights feminism i think that's too much too too big a too big a, a stretch so maybe we'll just go egalitarianism and then look to you know go after mechanized workshop alternatively we can go after nationalism uh to try and get the faster unification but i think we do kind of it's going to be we're going to need to figure out a way to free finland before we can do this for forming scandinavia with a big nice scandinavia that is very nice getting the free trade here uh you know kind of while we have this double market liberals oh yeah double market liberal situation i think it will be useful for us to go on to laissez-faire at this point in time it's going to make the landowners pissed normally and uh they won't be pissed right now and so this will be nice for us so we decided to go for amman here as our next expansion spot but i just want to point out that i think it's possible to go after china and the way you would do china we're not going to do it because it's a little bit gamey uh for our size of sweden but the way that you do it is you do a whole bunch of landings in manchuria uh they put in the front on manchuria and then you can reland beijing uh in order to take beijing i do think that this is possible to do on Sweden it's probably pretty micro heavy we're not going to do it but I did want to point out that this is one of the best expansion things you can do is taking war reps off of China as well as taking Beijing we could very easily just take war reps off of them with the same idea with Manchuria and then just land Taiwan instead or Formosa uh, with the idea being that if we occupy any bit of them uh, we can enforce war reps so something like open market and enforce war reps uh, this war reps would be like 30k which is you know very nearly our national revenue right now which would allow kind of a really big crank up and this would be like what an optimized play would look like we're gonna play it a little bit more chill like although we kind of don't have that much chill uh you know given how we have expanded our market in a couple of ways but we'll just not kind of go down that route but i did want to mention that it's very very strong strategy in 1.4 in 1.5 i'm guessing they're gonna make landing great shing and enforcing on great shing for war reps a little bit harder uh but if 
it's not harder, this is going to be kind of a staple strategy. For now, uh, we have put an interest up in China, mainly because they have the best silk trade route, or we are going to put an interest. I thought we put an interest up there. Okay, well, we're going to move an interest over there. We don't need the Zanj one anymore. Um, and so we're going to use this interest uh, to try and get uh, a really good silk uh, trade route and then uh, also grain at some point when our grain prices start to rise. Uh, the reason we're going after Oman, if I didn't mention it, is uh, they are in Persia HQ. Uh, if we take a look at the strategic regions, they have uh, land in the Persia HQ, in the Arabia HQ, and in the Zanj HQ. So we will get interest in all those regions after subjugating them so it's really useful at least on this front uh, our first landing attempt got bricked because one of our generals died but hopefully this one's successful we're going to move some generals to the the bricking front right now i just wanted to show what i mean meant by juggling earlier which is a very useful technique you can use for really low infrastructure uh countries or starts or this type of thing our motor industry is approaching six weeks finished and as soon as it hits one week remaining when there's just a barely a little bit of construction left uh required we're actually going to do it on two weeks we're going to send them to the bottom of the queue and we're going to keep doing this and then as soon as we get railroads we're going to put some railroads in the queue ahead of everything else once the railroads finish we'll get the infrastructure and then we'll just let the rest of our queue kind of empty out and the rest of these things to finish uh that way we are still making good use of our construction but avoiding uh you know the infrastructure malice causing us to lose market access which is definitely not something that we want going on now we have this railroad finishing in Svealand coming up, and then as soon as this is finished, we also get a war with Transvaal. But as soon as this is finished, we're just going to kick up all these Svealand uh, things to the front of the queue, and we'll see a whole bunch of them finish, you know, in one to two weeks, uh, and boom. And so we get kind of all the economic growth without any of the disadvantage of, you know, the buildings not, uh, or the buildings creating an infrastructure malice. I do believe we were waiting to swap up the iron tools. We were, so we'll swap those up now. Uh, we did, I think we imported... Did we import this? No, we didn't import it. Or I'm going crazy. Uh, maybe we're... No, we're not importing uh, any of the sulfur. We will be able to get sulfur from Brunei as soon as we annex them. But for now, we can just import it. It's not too big a deal. Uh, we're just going to import it from the uh, Prussian... Or, sorry, the British. Just enough to not cause uh, any sort of shortage. We'll be fine. And we'll save kind of our convoys for other stuff that we might want a little bit more productive. Because I'm thinking that fairly soon, uh, we are going to want to kind of transition and be a little bit more export-oriented... Uh, specifically with the case of tools. If we export tools, we can raise the price of tools. And by raising the price of tools, uh, this will allow us to greater specialize in them. And so this sort of thing. Of course, our market does need to adjust. I don't think we can export. Well, we can export them now. I think we'll export them to Xing for starters. Uh, maybe we want to, with Russia, we do need to figure out a way to get Finland free of Russia. And so we don't want to have too good of relations with Russia. So we might damage relations. Uh, you know, look to hover them in the lower end of cordial uh so that we can maybe do something but things are coming along quite nicely we of course went after this region because a ton of gold appears here you can see transvaal has all this gold we probably should have annexed them instead of dominioning them uh but this is fine enough uh it i gotta hate this event too much minus two inch group approval permanently is a very like very much a modifier you can't afford to get uh but this is kind of why we're going for this region uh we went for versat first to make sure that we would have an area to colonize we're also going to colonize up here uh notably congo is great for going for for getting an interest in this region we might go for them next uh we'll take this uh event chain but things are coming along quite nicely we're probably going to play until we get laissez-faire uh at least in this episode here uh but we have you know managed to acquire a nice little empire for ourselves with a ton a ton a ton a ton of native interests which i think is going to be very important in 1.5 moving forward so it looks like we might be getting punished here because we do see a diplomatic play between prussia and austria over leadership and austria doesn't feel very good about it which is not good because we want austria to take these to win these uh and this is yeah, this is unfortunate. The main reason is that we do not want Lubeck to uh, be part of the North German Fed. I think we might have made a mistake. It might still be okay because they haven't solved the Schleswig-Holstein question with Denmark, which we would... Tr 
problem well we might get involved in or we might just be sad uh, but what we would look to do is try and have Lubeck in part of our customs union for the purposes of forming uh, Scandinavia uh, I think that you know coming in here if you see nation formation Scandinavia if we hover it you see that Lubeck is part of it and so we do want to pull them into our customs union we started bankrolling both them and the Danes I think we're going to adjust our strategy a little bit and have the next tech we go for instead of egalitarianism be nationalism uh, and then egalitarianism uh, both of which are you know very very good but I think that we're really hoping the North German Fed doesn't form. I don't think it can form until uh, the Schleswig-Holstein question has been solved, which it hasn't. But if Prussia just turns around and declares on Schleswig-Holstein, then that would definitely feel bad uh, for our dreams of a massive Scandinavia. Well, in terms of how this is shaking out, it's looking pretty good for us. Uh, you know, because Russia joined Austria, France joined Prussia. But my guess, based on how things are unfolding currently, is that uh, France is not helping very much. Uh, I guess we'll see how this shakes out, but if the North German Fed can't form, uh, then we'd have to worry a whole lot le less about, you know, making sure that we get kind of the northern portions of Scandinavia here. So, I'm not sure I mentioned it, but we did go after Marina Kingdom in one of our wars. Notably, it has a whole lot of coal. Uh, I don't think this is the best expansion spot, but I think it's a really solid one, and I don't go for it very often, so we took that uh, as well. Um, we just finished going on to Laissez-Faire, which is going to be nice. We are really going to be able to crank up construction quite a lot on the back of this. I think we're going to put it in now. Uh, you know, this kind of puts us in a fairly good spot for cranking up. And then once we get more construction sectors, we'll have a ton of buy orders uh, for both iron and wood. And then what we will be able to do, and we've already kind of put some of this in the queue, is we're going to be able to push economies of scale bonuses here in Norland, which is a very good state for us to be pushing it for iron and uh, wood because we have 20% iron mine, 20% logging, uh, and we are also encouraging resource industry. So when we just take a look in here, you know, even with our level, you know, six currently, we are having 45% throughput. And this is a big advantage of Sweden right now in patch 1.4 is you have really, really good state bonuses. And this is kind of something we talked about at the beginning. Um, we also discussed, you know, how to get this market liberal landowner at GameStart, which can kind of help us, uh, you know, get some of these reforms in free trade and laissez-faire just a little bit faster, which was tremendously nice. Um, you know, kind of got the ball rolling and is going to allow us to enter this a very high construction phase starting next episode. Uh, but this has kind of been the starting step so uh, episode or kind of steps uh, for laying the foundations for industrialization and also, you know, making sure that we have uh, very robust uh, areas in terms of strategic regions that we have native interest in. We're going to pop that down in North India for a Sindh later, maybe. And so I think we did a good job of kind of expanding in those areas as well and explaining a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, very easy going to be able to pop up to about uh, 80, 90 construction here. Um, one thing we do have to keep an eye on, though, is the the fact that we are going to run out of peasants relatively quickly um, but that's kind of a problem for future episodes um, we are also going to try and uh, next episode you know be forming Scandinavia uh, this sort of thing not sure exactly how long we'll play would really like to get the Finns out from underneath Russia uh, to that end we might need to swap on to skirmish and even with skirmish you know I don't think there's a very good way for us to be able to go after Russia. We share a land border with them. Ooh, it's actually impassable. So, we might be able to declare war on Russia for something silly, uh, and then, uh, you know, do something uh, that is, you know, open market or whatever, and then a secondary war goal, releasing Finland, which I think doesn't auto-call them in currently on 1.4 i know it does on 1.5 so this would not be possible something like this but maybe we just eco up and look to form kind of a leader stronger scandinavia this has been the starting steps for for sweden i hope you enjoyed if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe you know the youtube algorithm stuff and have a good day